just like to welcome you and thank you for coming. And I hope that everyone has a great evening. We're really excited to be here. And um, right now I'll turn it over to uh, Gilbert from the Muscogee Ter Territory for a welcome.
It just surprised me so much when you told me how far Falls Creek went. But uh, when I look at the, uh, looked at the board when I first came in here, it made me think about when, when we talked about the giant tankers that they're talking about. Uh, they brought one of the uh, giant cranes, I was a long shore for 41 years. I drove those big cranes and take the gantries, big gantry cranes and take the containers off the ships. And uh, I got downtown too late to see it actually happen, but they had a time it perfect so that the ship could come under the Lionsgate Bridge and not hit the Lionsgate Bridge with the crane, and yet not have the hull of their ship drag along the shore. And uh, when the first articles went in the newspaper talking about the uh, giant tankers that were going to start coming in, that was one of my first thoughts was, oh my God, going under that bridge is going to be a peril for, for us. We've already had much of our salmon habitat destroyed along the uh, North Shore. I grew up in the North Shore because my mother was from there. We lived there when I was 15 years old. I went to the residential school. Every creek from Seymour down to, uh, oh, what's the name of that bay? Just before Horseshoe Bay. Eagle Harbor, that's right. We had fish in them. As a matter of fact, my dad took us for a ride just after the uh, Green Hill Park blew up. He was working on it when it blew up. So he took us to the animal side to see it and he decided to take us right down. We got down to the Eagle Harbor. He pulled beside the, uh, over the little bridge uh, where it was a creek. He pulled off the site because we were not the park. He looked down he said, son, I was about eight years old. He says, go see if you can catch one of those fish. So I went down and I used to grab a chump salmon, that we call them dog salmon, out of there. We went home, my mother cooked it, and it was our supper. But every creek over there was loaded with salmon. As it stands now, the only natural creek that exists in Vancouver is the one in the Muskin Reserve. We call it Muskin Creek. But it's the last remaining creek that has live salmon in it. And uh, when I thought, thought about all the things, the four points that were on that board, I uh, finished high school and I went out on a fish collector with my uncle, my dad's oldest brother. And we went up to Rivers Inlet, and then we went up to uh, Nambu, which is 300 miles up the coast, and we went up to Bella Coola and collected fish up there. But looking at the idea of tankers up in that area, especially the pictures I saw of kid in that area, the hazards of those giant uh, tankers going out of those inlets would be very bad. And uh, all it would do, in my opinion, is destroy more of our wildlife and our fish stocks. And so I keep thinking maybe I'm going to live long enough to actually see our salmon totally disappeared, that's what scares me. So I was told, given my little note there, that I shouldn't take up too much time here, <laughs> but I really thought that I should yeah. put these stories out. Yeah. And yeah. incidentally, there were two creeks that went from Falls Creek in over to Briar Inlet a long time ago, before they, then they got filled in. But uh, that's how many changes uh, happened, and I didn't. They were already done before I was born, 1930. But I saw a picture of my mother and her mother, my grandmother on my mother's side. They were all standing on a bridge over here. They were going up to towards Broadway to where the doctor that looked after our native people's office was. And somebody took the picture of them on this little bridge. So even in uh, about 1928 or 29, there was still a bridge going across Main Street area there, Falls Creek. It just, another thing that amazed me. I could go on and on and on, but I think uh, I better uh, turn it back, because I know you have a lot of uh, speakers and business to do tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
from. Look at that. <laughs> Isn't it great being green? I mean, I think we need to update Kermit uh, that this is really the time for the Green Party at all levels. It's a very exciting time to be green. And I think this room is an amazing uh, testament to the fact that the Green Party is here and we're here to do good things for the people of British Columbia. I want to thank Gilbert and uh, the Nuskoom people for sharing this wonderful space with us, this wonderful land with us. And I think his story is very moving about what is the changes that he's seen in his lifetime. And the Green Party is about reversing some of those changes so that we can restore uh, to the people of this province and to the other creatures of this province uh, the things that, that we want our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren and their great-grandchildren to inherit. So I was trying to think about what we might talk about or what I might say today, and, and I want you to imagine an Oreo cookie. I meant to pick one up on the way here. And if you take the two sides, the two uh, biscuits on each side of the Oreo cookie, I see one of those as Elizabeth May, <laughs> and the other one as Adrian Carr. And they're good in, in, in and of themselves. They're pretty delicious to have those, those uh, wafers. Uh, Are you and the to creamy enjoy. bit in the middle? <laughs> and, but in the middle, there's that creamy center that brings together the real sense of what an Oreo cookie would be like. And so the provincial green party is the center of the Oreo cookie. And we have these wins now at the federal level and at the municipal level. And so the Green Party of British Columbia is working to uh, bring that, that cookie back together so that we can have that nice, uh, wonderful center in, in the provincial election, which will be happening next, next May. And I think that one of the reasons it's so exciting to be green is that we are the only party that stands for what matters at this point in, in time. And uh, in some ways, the Green Party is saying that if if the people of Alberta want to poison the land of British Columbia with their uh, diluted fishermen, then we're going to say absolutely no. We're going to stand up and say it's time to build a firewall around British Columbia so that we can protect this province and we can then develop this province into the kind of sustainable place that we all want to live in. So, that's mostly the message I wanted to say, that, that we have these wonderful wafers of the Oreo cookies. And that we invite all of you to help make the glue come together so that in May of 2013, our objective is to win four or five seats in uh, the British Columbia, uh, British Columbia legislature. And uh, we can be a powerful force for the kind of change that we all need, know needs to happen in British Columbia and in Canada. We will be the gateway to a better future. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Chair, one more time. Okay, thank you.